Let's go. So guys, so welcome to my chess session. And this is the first of my two hour monster ones. We'll probably take a, a comfort break at, you know, some of us are over 50 now um, at, at the one hour mark. And what we're gonna be looking at today is attacking, sacking and cracking open your opponent's position. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I have a few, um, few things prepared and okay. So where are we? Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Awesome. Yes. James, you're looking very smart. Did someone die? Nah, got a new job. No way. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Technical officer, whatever that means. Wow, First wow. day. <laughs> awesome. Awesome source. Okay, just give me a second while I rearrange everyone's windows and stuff like that. Okay, so. All right, we've got a real mixed bag today, guys. I've got a bunch of my own games. Um, I've got some blitz games. I've got some rapid games. I've got, you might see the old familiar name thrown in there as well. But the point of today is we want to start to hone some um, just general attacking ideas, you know, our, our, our awareness of how to attack. And also, when is the right time to attack as well? So I'm just going to start off with, um, with this game. So this is obviously, it's a five-minute blitz. I was rated 1,300, opponents rated 1,300. And we're just, this is our loosener, right? This is just how we, how, how we relax into the session. So, um, you know, everybody feel free. Now we've got, you know, people rated from what, 800 to 2,100 on the call. So we're all here to learn off each other. And of course, this is going out on YouTube. Hello, YouTube. Um, and the reason is that we want you guys to know how much fun we all have together um, that you're missing out on. So please come and join Chess Bootcamp, basically. Um, you'll see some other faces as well pop up. Um, some people are still eating their dinner as we speak. But let's let's crack on with this one. So we can tell when I played this. Oh, yes, there we go. So it's a Russo Gambit. So this is in the last few months. Um, and it's declined with D3. Now, Pete knows what to play here. Um, does anyone else know the, the theoretical line from this point? It's, it's, this is not what we're testing. We're testing, you know, when is it time to go for the throat and try and stamp on our opponent's nuts, quite honestly. Um, <clears throat> so this is the, the Gioco Piano uh, Lucchini Gambit. Right, so when, the, when they decline with d3, you play your bishop out here, and it, it can be a whole heap of fun, particularly if they come in for a fried liver style attack, um, in which case you shut the door on the knight, and uh, then you throw your queen out. It's, it's a whole heap of fun. That isn't what happens in this game. They play the more conservative <clears throat> knight to c3. I bring out my other knight, and it's all looking fairly normal like that. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to hide the hide the the moves as well. White castles. Okay, so first question is, when should we be thinking about attacking? When, we, when should we be asking the question, is it time to attack? You guys got any thoughts or suggestions on that? I mean, should you make sure you complete development and get your king to safety before you even think about attacking. Usually. Usually, yeah, quite. That's a, I like that guarded response. Yeah, because there's, there's, no, there's no actual rules in chess other than the, the laws of the game. But yeah, usually. Thing is that sometimes there is an opportunity. Sometimes your, your opponent will leave a door open and if it's the right time to attack, basically, if you can make your attack stick and you can make it concrete and meaningful um, and you know that you can do that, then it's probably it's the right thing to do. Right. I mean, how many I'm sure a lot of us um, 
are guilty of premature ejaculation when we attack when the attack isn't going <laughs> to um, really you know maim our opponent um but at the same time um and this this may be more of an issue the older we get i don't know you know but um some of us are probably also prone to being overly cautious and conservative and we miss your sometimes our opponent's throat can go right in front of us and, and we we don't notice because we're only looking at our side of the board and whatever so anyway so i mean i would say that we should always have it in mind you know scan the board is has our opponent just exposed you know a soft bit why not you know we should always ask the question always have a look so you know here for example i can see there's a pinned pawn um but th there's another rule james you've mentioned this one as well i think simon williams has mentioned that this one is that like the rule of three that is it or is it plus one that you need you generally need three pieces involved in an attack or you need one more piece on the attacking plus side. Plus three, then. I think. Plus three. Plus three, yeah. Plus three attackers. Okay. Okay, so here what, what I do is I, I push F4 and I shut the door on there. So by the way, this so this game we're gonna work just go through as as a loosener. In future situations we're gonna look at specific positions as well. Okay. Now <clears throat> opponent plays h3. Um, so I mean, when you see this move, do you guys have an instinctive response to, to something like this? I mean, first of all, why have they pushed h3? Uh, prophylactic for that knight, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, not even just the knights. Very often this bishop as well. So they want to prevent the bishop from coming in with a pin on the knight, and they want to prevent our knight from coming in to the position as well. However, what else does this pawn push, the pawn adjacent to the castle king? What else? I mean, that very often has a, has a particular name, doesn't it? I mean, it weakens g3, especially since that pawn on f2 is pinned. Yeah, correct, yeah. And it's also known as a hook sometimes you know it can create a hook which means it's a target very often for for a sacrifice okay now not all of our um sorry craig's put a note in yeah craig says alarm bells are ringing after h3 especially when the black king isn't castled yeah there's an opportunity to hook onto that pawn via a pawn stop cool right i haven't seen that done unless there's a threat why would you do that without a threat well, that's a, it's a very good question. The point is that what I would say is, look, wait for the knight to come into g4, right? This is, you're not going to get a solo horse checkmating a king. It's just not possible, right? So, you know, this is kind of a rookie pattern that you see quite often, which is that somebody tries to prevent something that hasn't happened yet when they don't have to do it. Like castling early. But, Too early. Maybe, maybe. But this is trying to prevent the knight from coming in here. Whereas if they'd have done something else like, you know, develop their bishop or pull their queen out to e2 or something, let the knight come in here and then kick it away. I, I also, I'd say that h3 is, uh, is kind of a bigger sin than castling, say, a little too early because it, it, it can't go back h3. Yeah, I mean it's the the square the the squares around the dark square complex around the king is now just weaker. Yeah. So <clears throat> I push h six here. Now, what's the difference between my h pawn push and L L Zis's h pawn push? I mean, are they? Well, you uh, yeah, you're not you're you're not castled on that side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I do kind of have this space advantage, don't I, on, on the king side. So I'm think I'm wondering, I mean, I, I haven't reviewed this game in detail, but I'm thinking that maybe this is going to be supporting maybe g5, you know, g4, we'll see. Knight comes in, right? And this, this looks kind of, kind of ugly. Um, I ignore it. 
I mean, how do we feel about the threat of night takes night on F6? Well, you would take with, uh, you can bring your queen up. Yep, so I could get- Or if you take the pawn, you open up that G file. That's right. Okay, yeah, so there's two two good options. And what, the thing is that what I when my opponent's king is castled and my king hasn't, you know, I'm very, very likely to, to want to open up that file. Okay, so here he takes. How do I take back? G. I would take with the pawn, yeah. Yeah, take with the pawn. And now we have a serious threat. In fact, two serious threats. Mm -hmm. So when you see this combination of factors, one factor is semi-open G file, right? So we have no pawn on that file. The other factor is the hook pawn on H3. What would be your general approach? from an attacking perspective? I'd always grab the open file. With, you know. with what? With, with, with the rook, G. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you want a rook or a queen. So a, a major piece, the long range straight line file pieces. Um, so you want to occupy the open file and then the next idea would be what? In, in principle. Take the pawn. Yeah, take this pawn because this pawn here is pinned. So you can't recapture. So this pawn now is not defended. Well, it, it's not defended when there's a piece on the open semi-open file. So black now comes in with a bishop having a sniff around my, my horse. Uh bishop d7. Yeah. Wouldn't like this nice and peaking. Yeah, I'm I'm not hundred percent sure about this move. It feels a little bit slow. We have B3 pushed, and now the queen. So clearly here I'm, it's a blitz game anyway, um, but clearly I'm getting ready to castle. I probably don't want my opponent to force me to have to recapture the B pawn, but quite honestly, this queen is not about to start lunging into my side of the board anytime soon. This bishop's much better it's got a lot of clear lines that it could use, but still, I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I that this, that feels like a bit of a slow move to me. Their bishop now kind of fianchettos. I castle. Knight h4. Okay, so now, oh, now I dive in with the knight because there's there's other ideas as well. Remember, this pawn isn't guarding this square or this square either. So, what's the idea here? Now, okay, so tactics, guys, do you spot a tactic? Black to play and win material. One of the most basic tactics of all. Simply following this move, how many times is this knight defended? And how many times? Is this yeah, so it's defended only by the pawn. It's attacked by both the knight and the bishop. So ping, pang, pong. And now, this bishop is now again threatening on h3. Queen comes out to defend, kicking the white, the light square bishop away. We can actually now uh, almost trap the light square bishop, but we now have tension between the bishops. Okay, so defend the bishop. I, I like having this bishop here. I like the threat against h3. So I'm saying if you want to take my bishop, I'm going to replace it with a queen. There you go. Now the queen's face off. And we trade queens, okay? So th this is not a brilliant game. The game's going to get higher quality as we go, lads. Absolutely. King d7 now. So the point of this, I guess, is to defend this pawn. Why would I want to defend this pawn? Doesn't really matter a huge lot. Again, that feels a bit on the slow side to me. Okay. Now the king goes on to the h file. Um, yeah. Okay. And now h5. Okay. So what am I trying to do? Get rid of your pawn. Yeah. 
if I could flick Harry across the the hall, right, without the arbiter noticing my opponent, <laughs> then I I would want to do that. I want Harry off the board, right? So we sacrifice Harry. King goes there. <coughs> Rook comes in. Right. It's very very simple, simple attacking idea. So the threat is obviously mate in one. Um, what should black play here? Sorry, what should white play here? F3. He, uh, that would be illegal. Yeah, move the rook. Oh, I missed it. <clears throat> yeah, I should move his rook over here, actually. Uh, no, actually, I think he's... That's still mate in one, isn't it? Yeah, he's done. It would still be mate yeah. in one. Because his king can't hasn't got time to get there. I think this is the only move, actually. Yeah, I think you can just about avoid mate as white there if you play yeah. that. Like, yeah, now you're done. Now I pawn. I move my pawn to f three, and he's in huge trouble. Okay, and resigns. Okay, so you know this is just one of those very very simple, you know, attacking ideas, opening up the file next to the king. No, my my king, you know, is still lounging in the middle of the board. This is absolutely fine. And um, there we go. So just, you know, just a very simple opener here. Okay. <coughs> here is another whole game. This is this one's over in 21 moves. Okay. And we'll, we'll get to the critical point. So we'll walk through it. So we've got A, Charlie, Gambit. All accepted. E3, knight comes out. I play these moves a lot these days. Knight comes out, bishop pins the knight. Bishop comes there. Okay, queen e7. So the, the initial attacking idea here for black is to long castle, get the rook onto here, and then either capture on h2 with check, or if g3 is pushed, just capture g3 with a discovery against the queen. Okay, that's the, that's the blunt one. Now we have knight b to d2 blocking the queen. So I castle anyway, because this horse might not stay there for long. He castles, right? And I develop my knight. C3 is played. And I'm bringing my knight into here now. The idea is I really want to tempt this knight to leave the D file and open up the queen. But my opponent is canny here. Okay. So now I trade knights. And H5. Okay. Again, we're attacking up the H file. And my opponent again pushes H3. And now I take out the knight. Okay. Now. Okay. Simple, simple idea, right? <clears throat> now, is my expectation here that my opponent is going to fall for checkmate on the next turn? No, they're not. But what do I want them to do? Move that pawn. Uh, move, move, move that pawn. Yeah. Yeah. Move so carry pawn, yes. G2 to G3. And what does what does G2 to G3 do? It frees up that H pawn. Yeah, it well, undefends the pawn. Yeah, exactly. So he pushes G3. Now G3 here, I think, is a is a mistake. Okay. Um actually the uh, yeah, he should have moved his rook across, actually, I think, here. Mm. If you think about it, he moves his rook. My queen comes in with check. The king can come here. If my queen goes to h1 with check, king comes here. The pawn's defended. The rook's now attacking the queen. Yeah, can you guys see that? So mm -hmm. if he does this, I come in. Queen comes here. What's he got? Queen can't go there because king takes. The queen comes here. She's got to retreat because everything's actually defended. So that's okay. So G3 here, G3 is a mistake. Yeah. Right. You, you can kind of see it just the way that it, it all looks. It's sort of going to be really difficult for White to defend this position now. You really want to think that there is a very strong magnetic field holding these pawns close to the king. Okay, so now h4. So can white take the pawn? Well, no, it's mating one, queen h2. Can white push the pawn? 
same thing. It's mate and one because the king's trapped because the rook hasn't moved. Okay. Now the rook moves. But I take anyway. If pawn recaptures, in comes the queen, right? There's only two legal moves now for white. This one is mate and one. So the king goes over here. And now what do you play? What would you play here? I'm thinking I'll take, take the bishop. Take the bishop, check. Yeah. And that's next move is then also forced. Goes to here. Queen back here. Check again. <clears throat> this now forces the king because, you know, it's always nice. This is kind of like a... Um, like a dovetail mate, he can't retreat. So the king's either got to come out into the board or back onto the open F file, comes out into the board, check again. Yeah, and uh, that's the end of the game. Would any uh, would any bishop move there be mate? <clears throat> that's a, no, this is checkmate anyway. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, but I, I mean, any bishop move would also have been mate, right? Um. Yeah, because the queen's covering all of these and that escape square. Yeah. So bishop here. Bishop f4 wouldn't have been made. <laughs> Correct. Bishop f4 wouldn't have been made. <laughs> True. Yeah, anything else? Absolutely right. That's what John. So again, we're just kind of running over some, you know, some relatively basic um, ideas. Okay. So we're going to start picking it up now a little bit. <clears throat> So this is me against Farhod underscore one, two, three, four, five, as his mother called him. Um, mm -hmm. Now, black to play, and we're looking for an attacking idea, okay? Um, and in this position, I've chosen this position because there is only, this is a great move position. There's only one move. And guys, I'll repeat, it doesn't have to be elegant it doesn't have to be pretty and it doesn't have to be sophisticated right very often brute force is the right approach okay so yeah take a minute what would you what would you consider in this situation how how do we want to win so let's put together an attacking idea Okay. Okay, what's what's our <clears throat> what's our major attacking platform? We have a barrage, right? On on the F file. Yeah. Yeah, that pawn's quite well defended right now though, isn't it? Okay. But what's our what's our major platform that we could launch an attack from? In terms of what do you call it? We've kind of got a vanguard in our opponent's space. It's this this pawn on, on G3. Mm -hmm. right? So this pawn is then controlling these squares. So the king clearly only has a bit of back rank to go at. So candidate moves, lads. Um, push the E pawn. But I'm not convinced that works because the queen... <clears throat> Mm -hmm. um, push the um, rook on the G file, let it get taken, bring the queen up to F2 to check. King goes in the corner. Convert that to mate, though. Yeah, king, goes, king goes to H1. Yeah. Do we want to sack the queen? Mm. No, no, this is... We're, no. we're not doing anything so sophisticated or beautiful here. This is... This is this is you know just a bludgeoning, right? What's, yeah, um, you, what's the queen you, moving the e pawn hang, hangs the queen, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. What's what's weak on white side in particular? Because we can't get that, you know. Yeah, I'll say the pawn on h four. Exactly. So, yeah, it's undefended. It's also indefensible. The king can't get there. So, Hugh, what would you play? 
There's only one good move. I'd yeah, I'd take it somehow. Probably Queen F6, maybe. Bingo. Hmm. Bingo. Yes. If only the All Blacks had that much accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They usually no, do. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't even bother watching that game. <laughs> so you're allowed to move a queen backwards. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Never even thought of that. And another thing is that you are also allowed to move a queen just one just one square if you choose. Okay. So we'll see, we'll see how the game works out from here, right? What what does he do? Bang. In comes the queen. It's too late. It's a move. Queen H2, the next move is forced. Okay, how do we continue? The queen. Quite a classic pattern, yeah. Queen H1, the king can't come to here because of the pawn. So again, it's forced. And now, checkmate, isn't it? Yeah. Looks like it, yeah. What well, is the bishop ben. blocked before? Oh. That's exactly what I was going to say, James. Were you going to say bishop to g5? Yeah, bishop g5, Ben, a couple of moves back. Yeah, so after queen f6, what happens if you get bishop to g5? That's what I was looking at as well. Yeah, good point. Uh, but yeah, I would probably just take it out. But let's have a look. <clears throat> yeah, rook takes. Yeah, in fact, rook takes is the only move. Rook takes is minus 11 in black's favor. And then even pawn takes isn't even workable. It's saying f4, rook c1, king f1. Yeah, it's it's all over. Hang on, can we yeah, can we take a look at that? Um, so why why um why would the pawn taking the rook be such a disaster here? Mating like, 12. I think it's just, you're trying to slow down. The lines, the yeah. yeah. Basically, the infiltration is just not stopping. Yeah. So yeah. there's going to be a mate. Yeah. But the, the, the point of this is that sometimes, you know, you say, look, what do I want to do? I get want to get my queen here, right? Okay, how do I do it? Just drop her back. Yeah. And sometimes... I guess like, that's another, another signal to maybe sacrifice a rook if all the pawns are on light squares. And we sack the rook for their dark square bishop. Maybe that's a signal that we can do it. Yeah, yeah. I think it, I think it's almost more. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about this, James. But it's more, almost more the combination of that wedge pawn on on g3 and the fact that they just can't. That you know they can't stop the the queen from getting in. Maybe that is linked to what to where to where what their pawn structure is at the moment. Though to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Craig said the same in the chat. I can just. Grab the bishop if it tries to get in the way. All right, <clears throat> moving on. Uh, okay, Bubalex. So, <clears throat> well, I'm going to zip through the first few moves. Okay, this is the winner. So this is um, the Freddy Krueger against two knights. It's actually the weakest of the Krueger family, I think. But, you know, I do it for consistency. Okay. <laughs> You play a knight out, grab the pawn back. Okay, now watch carefully. Watch my hands, right? Attacks the queen, <clears throat> queen comes up there. <clears throat> pawn comes up, hit the knight, knight comes back. H5. Okay, why H5? To, to me, it, it's because it gives you the most natural development for your bishop, but I could be wrong there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, you want to develop your bishop behind the pawn to f6, protected by the rook behind it. To, to h6. h6, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and what would make it, what would be the cherry on the cake for that? Um, well, for, what am I trying to entice my opponent to do take the queen or it to exchange the queen if not no. you're going to end up dropping your the knight in to protect the queen 
you'll just come in and take the night. L look at look at White. Look at White's position on the board. <clears throat> what what's the most natural thing for White to be doing next if he's a principal player? Castle. Yeah, he wants yeah. the castle, but you're forcing him to undevelop the queen. Yeah, except that he does castle and he goes long. Um, straight into it. Mm, we have a plan, yeah. right? The only way to block is this and does nothing because the bishop takes and the queen's going to be lost. And that's the end of the game. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I thought that was quite a nice idea, you know, this. And this is one to remember. Yeah, if you think, oh, I'd love... So from here, my opponent, <clears throat> my opponent probably wants the castle. Look where that king's going to go. Ooh, it's in line with the queen. Oh, I have a dark square bishop. I'd love to put it here. But if I do that, the queen will take it. Okay, so this, this is a move, a move to remember in general. Push the pawn forward in, so that the rook defends the square behind the pawn and your bishop can come out. Yeah, but Ben, I, I was going to say that um, I've looked at this um, with the engine sometimes in, in stuff that comes up in the King's Gambit, and the engine loves this sort of move to to get the bishop out onto the H-file in a lot of situations. Mm. Okay. Cracking on. Here is a position. Okay, who we got? Frozen bread man. Okay. Frozen bread man. Okay. Now, best fighting trousers on Blackadder. We're looking for a brilliant move now from Black. Yeah. Now, opponent is rated under 1200, you know, but he's got 12 minutes on his clock. But so he's just played H3. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant move now for Black. And, um, I can give you a hint if you need. Um, but yeah, have a, have, a, have, a, have a look, see what you can come up with. <laughs> so, well, looks like you're going to get rid of this um, knight. Sorry? You almost want to get rid of the knight on f3. His knight. <clears throat> yeah, yep. Because the attacking idea would be the queen up onto f4. Come in, in but then you also need to get your knight into mm -hmm. uh, your black knight onto f. Um, well, it could even be get rid of that uh, onto f2. So you open the get rid of these pawns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what what are the major imbalances in the position that, that you that you notice? Well, uh, he's not castled. Yep. He's got uh, lots of... Uh, so when someone's not castled, you want to think break open the center, right? That isn't, isn't well, that a thought? Yeah, um, open the, yeah, the, the files around, around the king. Absolutely. So we've got some tension here. We've got tension between these pawns and we have our knight is under attack. <clears throat> I mean, White's king is also like. The more you look at it, the more it is. It really doesn't feel very safe at all. Just exactly. because the dark, the light squared weaknesses. Not just that it's not castled. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, do you want a hint? The 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 sequence involves pinning this knight. In two moves, we want to pin this knight in an absolute pin. Yeah. 
Okay, do you want to, do you want to see it? Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it either. Okay, first move is knight takes on f2. All right, we're attacking the rook. The king can't castle uh, long anymore because this rook's already moved. So the king, if it's going to castle, it's going to castle short. He doesn't want to move his rook. King takes knight. Okay, what's the next move? Oh, do you, is it F takes E? Yeah. F then you can push. Is it E? Push recaptures. And then the final one. You can put, you put, you push the E pawn. Yeah. Yeah. Pinned piece, attack it with the pawn. Happy days, laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah. And then, then the knight is lost. And the game doesn't last much longer. Yeah. And that's it. Nice finish. All righty, who's up next? That's the same position. Okay. Angel del Cielo, or Cielo. <clears throat> All right, here is our position. Um, this is obviously from, this is from a Vienna. And um, I castled long. This is a mistake, according to the engine. All right, I'm just let's mute everyone in until you need to talk. Um, okay, so this is apparently a mistake, according to the engine. So if I was playing Mr. S. Fish, then Mr. S. Fish would then wipe the floor with me from this point. But I wasn't playing Mr. S. Fish. I'm playing Angel de Cielo, and uh, he's made of flesh and blood, thankfully. Pawn takes. So again, this is a kind of, look, again, it's the hook. It's the hook pawn, right? And I'm using the Bishop Queen Barrage to trade my bishop for two pawns, but they are not just any two pawns, they're important pawns around the king. Now, what do you see? What's the crit critical threat for black right now? Well, if, if white can get a knight to g, uh, g5. Oh, uh, oh this guy. Yeah, because yeah, at the moment you can, you can remove that defender, the, F, the f5 knight. Right now, the, the critical issue is that I've got two attackers. Right. Right, yeah, 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 I didn't even see that. Yeah. So what's the critical move for black right now? What should black do? Uh, I think black wants to attack my queen. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. possibly. Don't know how he does that. Though. You can't move the knight here. But yeah, actually, you you are you are right. the The best move for black, you know, does have that idea. What about his knight to h seven? Yeah, that's the move that that's the move that black played in the game, and it's um, a mistake. Uh, it's actually a blunder, I think. Knight h seven is a blunder. The best move actually for black here is knight to g four. Weirdly, hitting the queen. Yeah. Why was it a blunder? Well, we're about to see. Okay. So, yeah, it had to be knight, knight two, g4. Now, the next move, we can work backwards. What does white want to do? Right. Cool. This is Stuff that Craig's been talking about, I think, you know, in a couple of sessions. What do we want to do and work backwards from there to formulate a plan? Okay. How would we love to check? I mean, you can look at it even really bluntly. How do we want to checkmate that king? With a knight? Yeah. N knight to g5. Okay. Yeah. So we want to play knight g5 so we can capture this knight and it's checkmate. And, you know. But you can't do that at the moment. So what you want to do is put the other knight in to f six well you can't do that right now because that's then attacked twice and defended once okay how else can we put our knight on here answers on a postcard
The next move is a great move. There's only one, you know, really winning move now for white. Yeah, so we're working backwards. We want to have a knight here so that we can checkmate here. Okay. We can't put a knight there because it's attacked twice. So. so it's just we want to move a pawn. How can we make it even horribler, even more horribler for black to contemplate capturing this knight with his knight? How many pieces have we got involved in the attack right now? And uh, how many would we like to have? Is another way of looking at it. Okay, so I'll show you the, the move that I came up with, h4. Right now, think about it. If this knight comes in here. Uh, I was he looking at that, Ben. And takes, h takes, and then look, we've got a queen and a rook on the, on the open file if this pawn captures this way. He takes... <clears throat> There now. This is this is also quite instructive, actually. Um, candidate moves from this point. So I did not play the best move. Next. I'd still want to push the knight to G five. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's the correct move. Actually, I, I played. I just captured the free bishop. I thought, why not? It's a free bishop, right? But in actual fact, the, the best move here is, is knight takes. Black simply can't do this, I don't think, because then pawn takes, and we're just threatening mate on either of these two squares. Um, queen can't come in to save it. That's just terrible. Uh, yeah, you're right. That, that, that is the best move. So in the game I took here, they moved a rook because, you know, clearly that's going to be instrumental to the defence of the king. And then the knight comes in. <clears throat> they just give up the bishop, and that's that's it. That's the end of the game. But, yeah, again, you know, similar themes to what we've been looking at. The hook pawn, trying to, you know, get rid of the pawns in front of your major pieces, opening up the king, trading a minor piece for, for two very important um, bodyguard pawns. All right, what do we have? Oh, what? what's this? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, Bundeswehr. Bundeswehr. All right, so going to go to the move C5. Right, so what is this? Okay, so this is the Queen's kind of fianchetto opening. Now, this is a setup. You know that that I I use against a lot of um, kind of modern kings, Indian, so on. Okay, so here um, I've got two attackers on this pawn, and I choose to defend. Right, if they're threatening to capture towards the center. Why not recapture towards the center? So now we recapture, and still we have the the center pawn push. What would you do here? Would you would you capture or would you defend or or push on. I would um, defend would so bring the knight out of. Um... You come here. To, yeah. Yeah. Richard's saying push. I mean, the advantage of pushing is that it takes away the F, the F, the the sixth rank for the for the knight. I defended with the queen. That's curious. But look, there's no f pawn. Hmm. Takes, takes, and now this is the point. Now there's a, a problem there. So they end up trading off. I mean, they could have put the knight there, but then what's the point of that bishop? So they trade off. And now c6. Okay. Um, Knight out, I'm getting ready to castle, right? Neither of us has an F-pawn, so the F-file is completely open. So we both want to really castle short. Okay. Knight to here, hit the queen. Queen comes across. Bishop now developing our final minor piece. 
this rook probably wants to come across to e1. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so <clears throat> now this is so check with with the queen. King comes here, and now what's the what's the next move for white? Bishop. I didn't. I didn't. Bishop, play. Bishop f four. Bishop f four. What does that achieve? It's uh, check. King comes in the corner. Okay. So king comes in the corner. Again, we're, you know, we're wanting to finish him, finish our opponent off as quickly and as brutally as possible. Um, we need another piece. So I do throw in the check, okay? King goes in the corner, and I think now is the, now is the point. Um, I, I was looking at, at, at something like B4. Pawns B4. I actually played pawn to A4 here, and now they play C5. And this is a, a mistake from our opponent. Now, what's wrong with this move? Why is this a bad move? It gives you knight to B5, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and actually knight to B5 is, is the winning move here. Um, it's the quickest um, because there's no defense against queen takes a7 mate because that, so that was actually my idea behind b4 is that i wanted to get the pawn to um i i wanted to try and, and figure out some way to make them move that c pawn but i couldn't quite work it out i'm not sure it worked yeah the the, the finish i did was queen to here and then they push the pawn again and get mated with the on the double diagonal um, but the problem with this move, the reason why knight in there was better, is that this move allowed that. So the king could have actually just clung on a little bit longer. Should have been okay. Okay, go through, do a few more. Right, so I've just made a mistake. Um, I've put my queen here, so Edwin de Santos, okay? Now, um, <clears throat> who's who's better in this situation? Success. Castle. Put evaluation on what does the machine say? There's black. Black is better here. Right. Black is better. So yeah, I, I've moved. So from here, roughly equal. This is now weakening, right? Now black is suddenly better. Okay. Um <clears throat> we can actually. No, we can. You know, potentially we, we can play on from these, but I think we'll we'll go we'll go through the examples and then maybe do like a full a full bot game um, after we break. So um, they they now kick the knight. In fact, let's let's flip the board and see if you can figure out. So this is the first move of their attack. What's the idea of that move? Kick the knight. Yeah. So the knight. Can't go there because of the rook, can't go here because of the queen, can't go here because of the queen, can't go here because of the bishop, and can't go there because of the pawn. So we are forcing the knight back. This is a, quite a forced move now. Okay. Now we would love to grab the the pawn there, but uh, we can't because of the knight. The knight. So what would you play? 
And by the way, my opponent in this game, this is a, a five minute blitz game. My opponent's rated 1362 and he played with 95.5 accuracy in this game. So. So out of interest then, Ben, could you have actually played, instead of moving the knight, yeah. could you have moved the queen to E6 um, for a check? Yeah, probably, yeah. It's, king moves away. Then bring your knight down to E, yeah. And then that sets you up to kind of come in from the... Come here and with a yeah. fork, possibly. Yeah, that's definitely an, an idea. So the knight moves back. My opponent hits me again. I bring my knight back again. Opponent takes that. And what did I do? Or what should I have done? Well, your, uh, your knight's under attack. It is. It's undefended. Mm -hmm. chance, did, did you take the pawn? No, no, I, I I moved my knight to safety. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's under attack. Do we want to take the queen to e2? To here? Queen takes queen. That guy does not like your knight, huh? He keeps queen pushing him around. Queen d1, possible. Yeah. I mean, the knight would be safe on this square. I put my knight here where it's defended by two rooks. But what's the problem with that move? Hangs. Bye bye rook. Bye bye rook. No. Yeah, I just disconnected my own rooks. Takes and checkmate. Protected <sighs> by this long range bishop of doom. How horrible is that? I was, I was actually doing well in that game. I was doing well and uh, blew it. He chased that knight all over the board. He did. He was a very unpleasant man. To his advantage. Okay, so where are we now? Soir. Okay, now, who's winning here in this situation? There's a moral to this story, which is that sometimes attack is the best form of defense. Okay? Now... So I'll show you what's happened. They've come in with a queen. I've moved my king to d8, right? What would white? What would white play here? What's the best move for white? I I see a fork with the knight. Yeah, yeah. Is that the best move? Material is actually, no, I'm, I'm up in material right now. I'm, I'm, I've, I've got an extra bishop and an extra pawn, but my king is in a heap of trouble. Can you find uh, a yes. better move than this? No, because he can't take with the white bishop if he went to the other side, because mm -hmm. that would his, he'd get rid of his queen. So yeah. if you brought that into G into E6, check. Yeah. I'll That's take a fork the... into your queen. So in royal fork. Yeah. And if it captures. Yeah. You know, that's not great. But my opponent was you know, he's 1490 rated. He went in for the fork. And you know, he went for the free stuff. Now I move out of the way. Now what should white do? How many of us would take the rook? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he took the rook, right? But he's he's not the right way. He's now up in material. But what can you see, guys? It doesn't matter how vulnerable your king is. What can you see from here? Black to move. Well, there's that. You got a free pawn. That, 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 it's not about material. It's not about material. It's about my king may look vulnerable, but opponent has forgotten the first two rules of chess club. What a bad safety. Yeah. Yeah, queen C five, I think. Queen C five check. Yeah. 
If he comes here, it's check. Mate. Okay. So he comes here. What do we play? Knight to F. Yeah. Check. Next move is forced. Double check. And he resigns. Because yes. whatever, whatever yeah. happens now, whatever happens, this queen is going to come straight in here. Yeah. So instead of taking the rook, what was the move? Um, from here, it should have taken this knight, which was also hanging. He, he got greedy. He went for a rook that seemed more important, but it wasn't. It might be worth more, but nothing compared to the power of this knight, because that knight completely tied the whole checkmate together. What was interesting is that knight could uh, have been taken by not just by the rook, but by the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, never neglect king safety. Sometimes attack is the best form of defence. Okay. Got a few, few more little ones, and we'll take a break and then chuck in again. All right. Ha. Huh. Okay, I'm going to flip the board here. I'm going to play a game called Brilliance or Blunder. See you, Bob. See you, Bob. Cheers. Right, this is Brilliant or Blunder, but you have to find the move. Black to play. And I'll give you a hint. We're looking at a trap. Bishop to g4. Okay. What's the reasoning? Uh, it traps a queen. Yep. The queen can't go anywhere. Um, it'll be taken. Excellent. If, if the queen takes the bishop, the knight takes it. If, the, um, yeah, the queen's just trapped. Yes, the queen's got nowhere to go. That's right. Brilliant or blunder? I would have said that was a brilliant move. We're going to find out it's a blunder because you're going to come straight see it. somewhere else. <laughs> it's a blunder. Absolutely. It's based on the fact the queen could come down to F7 um, yeah. and have a queen exchange. Uh, the queen goes there, knight takes it. Oh, of course, yes. Okay. Thinking hats on. Why is it a blunder? There must be a danger level somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's bishops available to come down for a check, but that's covered by the eight pawn. Um, is it about being greedy? So would you move something else? White can actually win a pawn on his next turn. I did not do this. I probably traded my queen for the bishop. Yeah, I traded my queen off. I, I saw no, you know, no response to this. But sometimes, if you're a lot more switched on, <coughs> okay. Do you want a hint, or do you want a bit longer to think about it? I think I've got a Craig hint. Put there. a comment in. Hmm? Craig, put a comment in the chat. Thank you, G5. Yeah, so you don't need a hint now. Knight takes g5. Well spotted, Craig. Okay. Now, without looking at Craig's comment, why? Why this? And this is the hint I was going to give you. You know this shape? <coughs> this is a long L, or a long knight's move, right? White wins the pawn. If they take... Fork. Royal fork. Uh, yeah, king has to move. We win the queen outright, and then we're attacking the bishop as well. How cool is that? Wow. And that's the kind of thing that you get from running the analysis and looking at the analysis instead of just hitting new game. Can you do that again, Ben, please? <clears throat> yeah. So you brilliantly found this blunder. Yeah. <laughs> Trapping the queen. Okay. 
And the idea is knight takes here with the threat of a royal fork. Okay. Um, we can't take the knight because then the queen's lost out, right? Could you have just taken with the pawn? Yeah. Hang on. So you took there. Knight here. If pawn takes. Queen is still trapped. Defended yeah. by the bishop. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we we basically, huh? No. If pawn takes, check is worse. So we're not trading queens off there. King uh, has yeah. to move. Then we win the knight. Yeah. Wow. Crazy stuff. Okay, just a, a few more. All right. Flip the board here. This is from a, a 1300 who goes by the name of Sensei Danya. Okay, so who may be known to some of you. Right. White has just played this. And this actually comes from one of Naroditsky's recent speed run videos. And that's why he's a grandmaster and we're not, okay? White has just played, white is a 1300, okay? White's just played the queen, uh, queen across here. What does Naroditsky do next? And this is a guy who I think has been number one on chess.com for blitz not too long ago. He sacked the bishop. No, he's this is he's got more cojones than that. More pawn to f three f three. Correct. Correct. Pawn to f three. And then he says, "Oh no, my queen!" Right. Yeah. So why pawn f three? Can you see the sequence? Assume that you're white. Take, hmm? You'll take the pawn because yeah. he's going to he's going to take your queen. You queen take the pawn. We take pawn. Next move move is take, king here. Okay. Yeah. Then take the rook. Yep. With check. a check. Check. He's got to move the king. He can't take it with the other rook. So he, well, if he captures your queen, so you make a queen, he captures. Yeah, well, that's fine. So he has to catch up with the king. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's bishop to... Bishop. Woo! Uh, H3. 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 <clears throat> yeah. Forced. He makes a rook. It doesn't matter what he makes. Checkmate. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> that is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I would have moved the queen. <laughs> Richard, did you know how that was going to go, or was it just a gut, gut instinct? Not exactly. I just, I had a feeling. I got a feeling. Yay. All righty. Now, um, Grandmaster Simon Williams. In fact, you know what? I'm going to skip this one because we're out of time. Yeah. I'll skip that one. Uh, so we were going to play that against the machine, but it's... Uh... Okay. Now, you'll like this one. Um, why don't we play against a level? Against? Like a level instead of a bot? A level? Yeah, like a 1500 or 1200. Well, human or uh, or stockfish set to that level. I don't know. Which is best? I don't know. But anyway, Thanks. you like this one. <laughs> this, this is famous. Okay, I'm going to um, I'm going to turn off the evaluation as well because we don't want to. Okay, white to play. So black has just moved, so they're attacking our our queen.
What's the best move for white? Now, most of us would go, oh no, my queen, my queen's under attack, right? And, st and stop thinking at that point. We can't take the bishop because it's defended by the queen. Got it. Would you attack the bishop with the F pawn? Uh, bishop takes pawn and we still- And then queen take, then queen uh, G seven. What about the uh, knight to H? Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's put, the, put the queen in Because even if he takes your pawn, then you got your queen move. And if he doesn't take, you could take with your pawn, take yeah. the bishop. Maybe he just goes here. Yeah. Yeah, he can see. Oh, he can still, still the knight to H6. H6. Yeah. Richard just called it again. Richard just called yeah. it again. Okay. So knight h6 comes with check. Okay. What happens next? King moves. Got no choice. Yes, yeah, that's forced. Yeah. Pawn can't take because it's pinned by the queen. King has to move into the corner. Right. Then what do we do? Or what does JRC do? Who's playing the white pieces? <laughs> so knight here, king goes in the corner. Shall I show you? Yeah, just one, one second. Well, just go get to the position, right? King goes in the corner. Queen takes. If queen takes, then what? Queen takes back. Can the queen take queen? Yes. Oh, it can. But then what if we do this? To fork. Oh yes. No, besides the fork, if you took it and so back rank check mate. Back rank fence check. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, Queen can't can't do that. We basically win the bishop. That is a very, very nice finish. That's lovely. Yeah. It may please you to know that JRC JRC. Stands for Jose Raul Capablanca. That's your body, right? No, 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 no. This is the real one. This was played in 1919 or something. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> this is a really famous position. Yeah, so this is the, the real Capablanca. Now, I've got an English mate who lives in Finland who uh -huh. is the screen name, Jose Raul Capablanca. Anyway, mm -hmm. one, uh, yeah, so we're not going to do that. So, right, let's take... Two minute break if you guys want a two minute break and yep. come back and we will we'll take on we'll take on a bot with a mind to attacking right attacking when is the right time to attack um and uh, just to make sure that we've really filed our teeth to find points where we can tear flesh all right so i'll see you back in two minutes okay Well, here are all, this is my daily game. Okay. The next move is forced. That's easy. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. My birthday party was was very good. It was, uh, yeah, we were lucky. We didn't get too wet. Um, we had a couple of uh, fire pits going out in just in the yard outside. 
had a gazebo up. Uh, my wife cooked some amazing food and yeah. had some some good ales. And uh, yeah, it was great. I, I didn't feel I didn't feel too rough. Didn't feel rough the next day. Good, good. But that, that's what you get with uh, good food. You know, important. Yeah, I feel my age today. That's the way to do it. I refereed two <laughs> two kids rugby matches back to back yesterday, and I could barely walk this morning. Yeah, really lot of running. I felt fifty today. It'll keep you young. Yeah, apparently so. So, what do we fancy? How 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 bold are we are we feeling in terms of bots? What are we going to take on? I'll let Richard call it. Oh. Yeah, good call. Do you want to go higher than a thousand? I think Richard's oh. higher today, so you know we could we could go full Nelson if we wanted to. That's a good one. Let's do Nelson. Okay. Then if everyone else is uh, still there. Hugh's come back. Craig's still here. James is still online, and so is Ian. So um, we may as well just crack on. So why don't we, let's go for it. Let's go for Nelson. Um, just can't see the button too. There we go. All right, we'll go random, random color. We are white. All right, let's go. Welcome back. We're taking on Nelson, Ian. So nice. Okay, so Richard, why don't you be captain? <laughs> Me? Yeah. What would you? And um, we're all here to support you and to help. You know, make suggestions. But our support won't be as good as Craig's was the other day. <laughs> well, Craig's still on the call, so that's, that's... Oh, okay. Well, I can, I, I'm going to shut my eyes and have forty winks now, and you know. Let the... well, of course, let's go with the Dan. I mean, the uh, yeah, Vienna. Okay, well, that's going to depend on our friend Nels. Now, actually, Nelson doesn't like the Vienna because what Nelson wants to do on his next turn is this. And this move, actually, if we play knight c3, he's not attacking the pawn. I knew he was going to do that. My old mate, Nelson. So we have the Vienna game on the board. And this is known as the dumbass queen attack. Oh, it's it's knight to f3, isn't it? Knight to f3 comes with tempo, right? It's aggressive. It's front foot, you know. Like I've, I've said before, Kasparov is famous for saying, "I used to attack because it's all I knew. Now I attack because it works. I know it works." Right? When you're attacking your opponent, they don't have time to attack you, unless you made a mistake, as we've seen. Um, <clears throat> D4 is an idea here. So think about attacking again. We've got discovery against the queen. So we could play D3 or D4, but if you can play D4, is that is that better than D3? Because hmm. we've got one attacker on this pawn right now, yeah? Nelson has got one defender. Now, if we play pawn to d4, lo and behold, we have two attackers on this pawn, and we're hitting the queen. Yes, yeah, he can't save the pawn now. And that, boys and girls, is why we don't bring our stupid queen out into the board. <laughs> Leave the at home. Will this be tight, the pawn? Well, I'm sure I know what Stockfish would say. You say, what would say? Take the free stuff. Are you crazy? Take the free stuff. Um, there is also another, another attacking move 
Yeah, it's a very, very typical Vienna game move whenever the queen comes out here. You can also put your bishop up onto g5 as well. Yeah, we could do that. So there's yeah. quite a few attacks, attacking ideas. But the so Vienna the, idea the would be the knight, point. wouldn't it? So the old knight, the knight d5 move is an absolute classic in the Vienna. Anytime the queen leaves home, knight knight d5 hits the queen, um, and you're also attacking c7. Now, in this instance, the queen has two squares where she can go. She doesn't have to go back to, to d8, she could go to d6. But still, in d6, she's getting in everyone's way. And in fact, with d6, we can do that, but then she'll trade off. I kind of like Ian's idea, but why not develop? Let's develop another piece. Or do we just take the pawn? Take with the pawn or take with the knight? See, taking with the pawn comes with another threat on the queen, which gives us another tempo. But this also comes with a threat on the queen. I think I would lean in favor of the move that comes with development. Mm -hmm. Because remember, once it, whatever this queen does, we still have this, right? You know, this is yours. No one's taking it away from you. You know, you're going home with this. Yeah. James, what would you what would you go for here? Yeah, I just think with the bishop being fragile on g5, it means we have to recapture with the pawn. So we can't we I think we'd like to take that pawn with our knight here and keep a nice structure in the center. But if we put the bishop out there, the knight needs to defend the bishop. Okay, so putting the bishop out into your opponent's half creates a slight liability. Yes, I'd be on the side of knight to d5. Knight, knight e5. Sorry, knight to d5, oh. the other knight. Yeah, oh, I, I like that. Okay. I like that move. Yeah. yeah. I'd be interested to know if Craig would have a different view on that. Yeah. Um, Take the pawn. We still have this again. Yeah. Now, we are doubling up our pawns in the middle of the board, but... Sometimes double pawns can be in, a, in, a, in an aggressive capacity, an offensive capacity. They can be really unpleasant. Um, what else do we have? Neither of these knights can move and attack the queen because the queen's on the wrong color. She's on a dark square. Knight here feels just weird. Because we, we're going to get our knights kicked back but that could be weakening. What do you think, Richard? <clears throat> I'm, I'm looking. <laughs> huh. I mean, the other thing is, are we concerned about them taking up one? Could I do back. wonder if the idea of the tempo would be better. So if you took the horn, that queen still has to move. Again, yeah. That would be the fifth. And they're, they're not developing at all. I mean, we've certainly got control, good, a good control of the center of the board there. Um, we have got a threat of being kicked. Um, but I'm sure another, there's going to be ideas. Another consideration I throw in as well is we are semi opening the D file, right? And we are closer to castling than, than Nelson is because we've got both knights out on the board. And that all Nelson is doing is throwing that queen around. Yeah, I've got. I've got to just want to throw one out there. What if you brought your your knight out to uh, c four? Bishop c four. I'm just uh, as a an idea. Yeah, bishop c four. I mean, the thing I like about it is it's staying. That's, that's, that's what I'm looking at. Mm hmm. Not maybe not the best move, but an idea. Well, it also means we can castle on, on the next turn. Right. Now what what do you think Nelson would do if we do this? Um, let's see. Well, he might he might go to C six because the bishop's undefended. Mm-hmm. But then can we protect up? Let's do that. I like I I'm open to that move. Oh, he didn't. He didn't. 
And then uh, two attackers on here, but we have two defenders, so that's okay. The knight, the knight to g5, maybe? What is it? Just one quite possibility. Yeah. Nelson is really constrained. I, I'm kind of expecting this knight to want to come out at some point. Bishop here. Oh, maybe maybe this is the time to take that pawn because the pawn would be covered by the knight. Well, if knight takes, we could trade. Yeah, maybe not. Hmm. I think I like kind of bishop e3, just defending the pawn again, but it's not the cleverest square for that bishop long term. And there is this principle that you want to put your pieces on the squares where they are going to be most useful in the game, not just on this turn. I don't see anything wrong with castles right now, unless there is a an immediate kind of you know tactical opportunity here. And I don't know if there is. I don't think there is. I also quite like the move C3. Then if they take, we can recapture the pawn and re-establish our center. It also blocks off this diagonal towards the king. But let's go ahead and castle, you know. Might centralize this rook, get it lined up with that king. Okay, we have an attacker on this pawn. Is the pawn defended? No. So rookie rookie one's very natural two attackers on there bishop out is that a better wow. any wow. ideas ideas guys what, what would you do here I mean, just taking that pawn in the center with the pawn now. And if knight takes, can't we just pin the... Oh, but yeah, if you pin the knight, then knight takes, knight check. <laughs> yeah, but then queen recaptures and defends our bishop. Well, the bishop's fine anyway. Yeah. Uh... The, the key factor here is we have a better central control with the pawns and we're castled and we've got a, a centralized rook so we are well ahead in development so when you're well ahead in development and your opponent has a vulnerable king like we said before opening up the center makes sense eh? maybe this That's a good one. I mean, it's not a real threat. It's not really staring at anything. It's not pinning you'd them. Be kicked but... as well, aren't you? Hmm? As long as you'd be kicked. Yeah, you know, so, sometimes being kicked isn't a bad thing. As we've seen, I mean, these H-pawns, you know? In fact, there was a line I saw with the Narodipsky playing with the black pieces against the Vienna, where he brought his bishop out to here, right, to pin the knight, in order to prompt the opponent to move the bishop out, and then he moved it back, right? He said, this is literally what I play here. Uh, I'm still liking the idea of take the pawn. Yeah, this bishop now hangs. So do we carry on trading? And if you well, not if you if the bishop may hang. If if you take the dark square bishop now and put it on f four, it pins that to the queen. Yeah, and if they take our knight, we can develop our queen for free. Are you happy with that, James? I think. I also just briefly looked at just taking the knight and then pushing just f four, but that's a bit more boring, maybe. Thank you. Um... Taking the knight first, then playing bishop f4, well, x-ray, c7. The knight to f4? So bishop you, Yeah, bishop f4 after queen takes. Hmm. 
And now the queen can't anybody defend. That's really good. And then I spy with my little eye something <laughs> beginning. Oh, fuck. Oh, beautiful. Ugh. Man. That is a double attack on the queen also. Wow. Do we take with the knight? With check? Forces recapture, or do we take... We take with a bishop. Hang on. If we take with a bishop, we're still attacking the rook? Yes. With the bishop, we probably take the knight, and then we get another... I'll take the knight, because the dark square bishop covered. Oh! Right, okay, you're right. That's not under, even under threat. So if we take here... And he can't take with this pawn either because that's pinned. If we take here, he's going to take. He's got to do C takes. Yes. Yeah. We're winning a queen anyway. It doesn't matter. Well, Nelson, I hope you've learned your lesson. Okay. Another tactic, Richard. What can you see here? <laughs> Reading the board, there another tactic should present itself. So this pawn's moved here. Because you've been on fire tonight with your tactics or your instincts anyway. So what, what can we say about this pawn here? It's pinned. Yeah, it's pinned. And if it's pinned, then what is it not doing? Protecting. Yeah, it's not protecting this square or this square. And what does that mean? So it means this pawn is unprotected, which means that with check we can capture this pawn with check. Or the rook? No. Oh yeah, we could have maybe captured the rook, but why capture a rook when you can have a whole pawn? Well, you can have it as well. I <laughs> <laughs> the cake and eat it. Indeed. Yeah. You're greedy, Ben. <laughs> you've got to put the knock back haven't you you can't take um, remember that well, you, can bring the, you can bring the knife seven. We, could, you, we could do knight back to here and rescue the knife. Knife. It's probably what I'd play and in fact if you follow that through you can even get a bishop Come back you got a, you got a bishop. Pawn. Again, taking advantage of the pinned pawn. Yeah. This is only Nelson. He deserves a good um, hello. In it's thrashing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> C3 with tempo. It's either that will lift the rook. I'd probably play C3 without thinking at this point. I would. Okay, it's pinned this pawn. We can always play this if we want to, but I think we'll go back to the other idea. Yeah. King and bishop. Or do we want a free pawn? <laughs> I'm, I'm often loath about taking the, you know, this pawn, if it's right opposite my king, I think I'd rather take the bish. Which is if you pitch. take the bish, you've got a better um, checkmating idea, which is bring your queen, lift your queen up now onto the. Um, that's it. There you go. A checkmating plan. It doesn't have to be, you know, subtle and brilliant. So, so queen here now. We force the king onto one of these squares, and then maybe we push the pawn up. Yeah. Or should we centralize this other rook first? Let's bring all of, our, all of our weaponry into the. I'll push your pawn. <laughs> the knight will move out of the way. The knight will move here. You need to do that, otherwise, you, um, it's a pain in the butt, that knight. So. Yeah, yeah. He's Look, protecting it. How about we threaten the knight? And then just send Eddie through. 
to yeah. capture the flag. But I mean, trading off here would not be a mistake. Richard, what can you what can you see here? Can we win more more material? If we take this knight with our bishop, what's going to happen? I'll have to take it with a pawn. Yeah, because the king can't take it, be in check. Okay, so if we take this and then the pawn takes, the knight is gone. It's evaporated. Then how can we win more more material? Well, oh, we can take the pawn right right on uh, d seven. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, d two. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do, do yeah d seven. No, sorry, d seven. You're quite right. My apologies. It's late in the day, so um, should we take the pawn now? I would, I would um, not quite yet. I would Wait actually get to. Um, How about moving the uh, the pawn to uh, e five and cover both mm -hmm. the king and the bishop? Why not put a check in? Yeah. You're thinking this one. I, 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 yeah, I like this one. Where's the king going to go though? So kings in check can't go here or here. That's there's only two legal moves. Good guy to the board, isn't he? Huh. We need to get a rook out. Yeah, rook to here looks looks nice, but then the pawn is going to take the bishop. Oh, yeah. Maybe and then queen in here, something like that. Or even check. take the pawn. You could check the king. Oh yeah, quite right. Quite right. There we go. Nice. Hold it. Check it again. I'll do. Yeah. Nice game. That was good. And we that were... was a thrashing, huh, Ian? That was definitely a thrashing. Plus 17. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see Nelson fold. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. New game. I think we should, let's take him on again as black. It's too much fun playing Nelson. And, and <laughs> the thing is, Nelson's, people hate Nelson. <laughs> okay. So what, what what do we play against D4? Mm. Kirkham. Can do. Let's do it. Just bring his queen out again. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Knight, knight f6 is uh, yeah, principle. I mean, well, it, it's you can say you can even push a pawn, can't you? Yeah, because if, if you know, push the d pawn to bring out the caracano, your bishop straight oh, yeah, yeah. onto that queen, straight to d5 with with uh, discovery. Yeah. So he's got you, he's got to move, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, and look, we're putting the pawn in the center. And now we still get to play knight f6. Yeah. With knight f6, we hit the queen, we hit the pawn, we defend our own pawn a third time. So for all you Nelson haters out there, hopefully we're going to bring... Yeah. ...some relief. Take the pawn. Right. Everything's defended. I kind of I'm looking at Queen B six with an idea of mate in two. Queen yeah. We go here, yeah. we take here, this is forced, and then we take the bishop and it's mate. I can't see a problem. Uh no. Nope. Okay. Well, he stopped our idea. Okay, now that we've got 
because we've played the ridiculous Caro Kana, we've put this pawn on a square where it is in the way of the knight. Should we play knight d7 with tempo? Then maybe bring our knight here? Why not put... Oh, hang on. Oh, F6 also hits the queen. And with um, Christine's way of doing things, I would probably lift, um, I'll push your e pawn so that you can bring your bishop out and yeah. then push your c pawn up one. So it might trap your dark, your light square, but it does mean that um, you do that push. Then if he takes with your, his white pawn, you just come up with your bishop and then you're on a nice line up to f2 just come up with a strategy also notice that this pawn is just developed it's defended only by the queen yeah now <clears throat> if play, he, seven, he can't the queen can't stay there and can't stay there so maybe we just win the pawn outright and then the knight doesn't have to stay there you know knight can carry on to f6 so it can but then are we making life very hard for this light squared bishop Mm -hmm. In the Carol card, that light squared bishop's a pain anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Like in the French. Yep. <sighs> like in this move. Oh, Nelson. Don't do this to me. What? We have another discovery now. In fact. Or even just not... Isn't that a lost queen? What? That discovery gives you a lost a lost queen. You can't put it anywhere. Oh no, he can. I've got it. He can put it one way, and one there. location. And there. I like this though. I mean, you said you know, bring the knight out. Okay, <laughs> okay, Nelson. Be back in. We could have won the pawn as well. If we check here, he's just going to play c3. Mm. I'm still at the idea of lift that um, e pawn. So e6. About it. it puts it in a good position to be able to castle on the king's side. d4. c5. c5 is a full break in the garrison. There's a comment from Craig, Ben. Yeah, it's Craig great. says repeat. Bring the knight. Okay. All, all I was saying is, back. if you wanted to win that point, you could just repeat and make back to d7. Yeah. So what's the move? Knight back here? Yeah. Just if you want to win that d pawn, which <coughs> is a free pawn. Okay, now. now this bishop's tied to the defense of b2. Okay. Now, what I would, oh, can we? I would consider this move at this point. You know, see if what you about would... double. What about, can you double push that to e pawn to get that queen off that rank? Because you're looking to try and get a. Well, we're just going to have an exchange now, aren't we? Yeah. Because we were looking at attacking yeah. down. I missed but, that last move. Yeah. And Nelson isn't famous for doing terribly well when he loses his queen. I think bishop b4 check. Now there's no c pawn. He has to block with the knight or the bishop. Um, but also notice our knight is looking at both of these squares, and our bishop here would also be looking at the same squares. So what does that mean? Is that good? This pawn is also vulnerable. We're going to play this because it's, it's an isolated queen's pawn now. Still want to bring the knight out again. Get the knight out of the way of that bishop. Yeah. Never play oh. three. Ouch. No, this is okay. This is okay. We can divert back to here or here. Um, I mean, I guess my player. Can we That's still ridiculous. throw in the check now? If we throw in the check now, yeah, we could just trade off our knight. In fact, we can, we've got guaranteed. Oh, no. 
uh, unless he gives up casting rights. Okay. Um, that's not playable. We come back here now, now that the bishop's out. Heavy control over light squares, no control over dark squares, but at least it's fairly central. Awesome. Um, Sorry? No. The pawn. Um, we have knight to h uh, h five. Oh, to defend that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, or we well, no, we want to keep the pawn structure as is down the bottom. Um, yeah. Perhaps castle. Don't know. Will that help us? It's one of those key questions, you know. The thing is, we're up two pawns. What would we have to... What would we be compromising to, to try and defend this pawn? It's it's doubled. It's kind of offside. This is also... Well, always, yeah. I mean, knight to h5. Knight to h5, yeah, and, and he can't kick it because then we've got on passant as well. But is it worth is it worth putting our knight on the edge of the board? No, I don't think so because now thinking about it, he's going, probably going to push the um, g pawn two squares, and we'll have to kick it out again in, so we we'll lose it anyway. Another consideration is he's actually got two attackers on it. Ah, uh, yes. So I would say castles now. Yeah. Give up the pawn. Oh, wait a minute. Before you do... Oh, all right. Both bishops are faced in that right. direction. You sure you don't want a castle along? Um, do you... Is that a thing in the caro? Do you ever castle along? Looks yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Yes. How do you feel about this? And if takes, takes, and we're looking to dive in. Connects the rooks as well. Can it complete development? What about just G four? What or oh, G G five? What's wrong with that? Just defending right. the pawn. Now the queens are off the board. I don't think we're worried about our king so much. Are we? Ouch. No, it's just tension. Tension isn't pain. A five. Is is a thought? If it takes take back the eighth one, can capture towards the center. Is that bishop defended? Yeah, knight defends. No, our our black bishop. No, it's no. not. A five would defend it. Okay. Um, also, but then if they take, we capture away from the center and isolate our own d pawn. Right? If we do this and they take, we take back with the bishop. That's fine, but. If we do this and then they trade. So I, I would argue for a5. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, my mom. Uh, say something for pushing. No, not pushing. Well, the thing is, it's cold since, well, let's just say it. Can we put our rook on the e-file? Yeah. yeah. Very respectable move. I'd, I'd also like to get this bishop off, off the back rank. And you know, I think this, this is fine. We've got these dark red pawns here. This bishop is, I think, Nelson's best bishop. I'm inclined to play this and see if he fancies playing a game of swapsies. No, he doesn't, but... Notice this pawn is undefended. Uh, rook f8. I'm not the other rook. Sorry. Is it time to get rid of that knight? Double up the rooks, perhaps double up the rooks first, and then look at getting rid of that knight. 
What on the night? Oh, no, can't. Yeah. I see what you mean. So if we double up the rooks, we've then got two attackers on here. It's currently got two defenders, but if we eliminate one of them, yes. you know, he recaptures with this knight, doesn't same. he? That's the same. Yeah, I've just picked that one up. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? There's only one open file on the board. So why not? Yeah. Double up. Any objections? No. No. Rookie seven. We yeah, he, he yeah. can't develop his rook or his knight in the in the right hand corner. So mm -hmm. I think the onus is on him to change the position. Now the other knight. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, that would that help us? No, it's a bad bishop. <laughs> but here it's it's okay it's okay there is there a case to be made to take his knight well it's more forcing no. the rook his other knight. oh i see uh, taken the other knight yeah well james has just said you know currently this knight and this rook are not yet in the game and this knight can't get into the game right now so why would we just yeah, free him up? Yeah. Problems in one game. All right. I think probably just drop it back and keep, you know, keep the control. We've seen right. the power that bishops can have from a long, a long range. If we take his knight, he can only capture with that knight, though, can't he? Because if he takes to the bishop, he loses the other knight. So right, then you can take that uh, that knight on. If you take the other knight on it on the B file, you can take that knight on the C file for free. Well, unless he recaptures with that knight, yeah. So is it well, time I'm to saying if you take it out? Is it now worth time to bring that up? And... Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, because this is this is pressurizing, you know. Yes. But like we say, if we take, he takes here. If we take this one out. He takes backwards. But right. then, but that's, if he's oh, hang on. Backwards, that means we take his other bishop. Right. Okay, so so there we go. If we take this knight, if he, takes with the knight we win a piece. Right. If take this knight. If he takes with this knight, we win a piece. We win a piece. Yeah, because we've been really layering up now the pressure and we've just won a piece. Absolutely free. Um, Don't take it because he'll take it. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. You better pull him back. Do we, do we nail this knight first? Yes, I think so. Do we want to no, save take... bishop or just grab it? I think grab his go seventh. There's a bit of background noise if we could mute ourselves, guys, when we're not speaking. Also note on Zoom that if, if you mute, um, you can just hold the space bar if you want to talk and then let go. You don't have to click, you know. So, options then. We've got, we're plus five right now. I think we should trade down. I think we should take the bishop, let him take. Well, why not bring the bishop back to D3? Because he'll take it. Right, well, I don't you bring the bishop file. back. Um, well, no, you can bring it right back if you wanted to. But remember, we're up in material, guys. You know, yeah. we're up a full minor piece and two pawns. So actually, you know, equal trades is, is good for us. And it, what's more, we get another pawn if he captures the bishop. Or he may just choose not to do anything at all. I'm inclined now to put my bishop here. Lining up a discovery against the king. I'd kind of been inclined to drop the rook back and threaten the other bishop. It's also a thought. Just an idea. We're here also threatening this. Yeah. But what if we move our bishop first and then do that? That's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a check. You see, we're just taking ideas and then combining them. In fact, if you bring it all the way across to the rook, 
you've got a ruck afterwards. Yeah, um, they, he'll he'll come up uh, to the second, maybe not. second rank. But this bishop is a sitter, right? Or yeah. I mean, he's going to have to go. If, he's going to have to go. In fact, that's going to be forced, isn't it? If our rook stays on two, yeah. Cal, cal yeah, there might be something worth calculating with rookie one here. If you brought it to C C two, you got a, a double bishop. check. It's a double check. Oh, and C2, then I, and you got a free bishop because the king has to move along. He has he has to move and to then the second rook is mate. Wow, nice spot. Oh. Okay, so yeah, the point of double check. So if like, so if you put a king in double check, you know the king must move. There's no way to be in double check and to block or defend. So, oh, so here, the king has to come to one of these squares. He can't stay on the back rank because of a rook. He's in check anyway. It has to go there or there. Our pawn defends both of these. Quite right. Beautiful. Thank All you. Right. Two of them. Good one. <sighs> It's what's better than beating Nelson? Beating Nelson twice <laughs> inside 30 moves. Beating that Nelson. Was, that was That's a lovely tactic, though. Yeah. That is a brilliant tactic. Yeah, the whole double check thing. Great stuff. All right. Well, I've really enjoyed this session, guys. Great session. I hope you have. Do, do we all feel a little bit eviler than we did at the start? I hope. Yes. Yes. We've seen some great computer suggestions. We've been some, we've seen some great moves from chess masters. We've seen a brilliant move that was actually a blunder, which I just think is fantastic. That's that is my highlight. But yeah. But the other thing is, especially with this is what's so great about Nelson, because he really does, you know, he lines himself up for a proper kick in. Um yeah, we did. Yeah, it's just incredible because we've put we've, we've put our rook there where it's actually attacked three times and defended only once, but it's in immaterial because the king is in double check. Beautiful move. All right. So um, yeah, at the end of this week, Friday evening, then we're going to have a session with all of us again, and. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Should we should we take on a a, a big bot? Or there, we'll maybe do a bit of Q and A and a bot battle, something like that. Get everyone together. It's, it's brilliant to have uh, all the coaches on this call as well. So, anyway, we'll leave it there. I'll see you guys same time um, this Friday. Okay, brilliant, great. Sorry, good thank day. you, Ben. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Thanks James. James. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. See you, everyone. Good night. Cheers, everyone.